Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ryan Cam, and before we get into talking about the Maltese Falcon, I would just like to take a couple minutes to say thank you, because uh, this channel just recently hit 100 subscribers, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Um, I've been putting a lot of time into this channel, just because of, well, recent events, and I am just supremely happy with where the channel is going. I, I don't want to make turn this into a big production. Uh, I've got movies to watch and to review, so I just want to say thank you to you all for watching and just for 102 of, of you to say, you know what, I like what this guy has to say. Subscribe. It's just... It just warms my heart. It really does. Again, I don't want to... I don't want to drag this on any longer than I have to. I just wanted to say just thank you and I'm going to try my hardest to make this channel even bigger because this is only the beginning like this rocket ship is gonna go higher and higher and higher and I hope you all are along for the ride with me so with that all out of the way let's dive into this next episode of the AFI project starting right now the Maltese Falcon was directed by John Huston and it is based on the book written by Dashiell Hammett it starred Humphrey Bogart, Mary Astor, Peter Lorre, and Sidney Greenstreet, among others. And when it comes to the genre of film noir, this is largely seen as its Rosetta Stone. Every trick and trope that would be seen in movies similar to this all throughout the 40s and into the 50s draws some inspiration from the Maltese Falcon. It tells the story of a private detective named Sam Spade, just awesome name, He's played by Humphrey Bogart, and through a series of events, gets caught in a very elaborate web of lies and deception, involving very colorful characters, which is ironic considering the movie is in black and white, and it all revolves around a seemingly priceless statue known only as the Maltese Falcon. I haven't seen too many noir films, I've seen the important stuff. But from what I've been able to ascertain about the noir genre is that the plot, largely speaking, doesn't really matter. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, the actual, like, what's going on in the movie. I mean, I'm talking about theme and subtext. Noir films really don't try to say anything profound. Noir is essentially a vehicle for great actors and even more colorful characters that they portray to get in a room and just interact with one another. Plots in noir films tend to be so complicated that by the end of them, they just kind of amount to nothing. In the words of the great philosophers Lincoln Park, in the end, it doesn't even matter. There's enough of a plot in the Maltese Falcon, it revolves around a literal statue called the Maltese Falcon, which is said to be covered in jewels and gold, and it is said to be priceless, that the plot moves forward. However, outside of the Falcon, there isn't really much of a plot. This is just a vehicle for Humphrey Bogart, Mary Astor, Sidney Greenstreet, and Peter Lorre to just play these people that you don't want to aspire to be, but just love to watch. Let's make no bones about it. In this movie, there are no good guys. There are bad guys and worse guys. Even the good guy, Sam Spade, is no real saint. You know, he's just good enough to where you can kind of see, oh, this is the protagonist. But he doesn't really do anything all that honorable or noble. Like, he's just as bad as the rest of the characters, but he is, but you sympathize with him because he has been thrown into this web of deceit and he is just trying to find a way out. But he quickly realizes that the only way out is through to the end. And so he just tries to wrap this up as quickly as possible. As I stated in my Casablanca review, I love Humphrey Bogart. To me, he was just the king of cool between like the 1940s all the way up to the 60s. Like, he was just, he had so much natural charisma, and whenever he entered a room, you're like, that's Humphrey Bogart. 
He's that type of hard-boiled detective that he doesn't take crap from anyone, no man nor woman. And as the plot thickens, he gets more and more frustrated. But Bogart is not alone in the good acting department. There's Mary Astor, who is suitably mysterious. You have Peter Lorre, a veteran character actor, and just, he's killing it as well. And my favorite part of this movie, outside of Bogart, in terms of actors, is Sidney Greenstreet. Uh, he was, like, on, like, the bottom rung of people who were going to be cast as the fat man, Casper Gutman. But after a screen test, he so impressed Houston that Houston fast-tracked him into the role. And that was an incredibly wise decision. All four of these actors only have one scene where they're in a room together, and that's near the end. That's my favorite scene in the movie, because you know in the case of Spade, Cairo, which is Peter Lorre's character, Gutman, and O'Shaughnessy, Mary Astor's character, have been around a time or two. But without going into too much dialogue, you immediately get that. There's a lot of good visual tricks and tropes and well-done visual storytelling on the part of John Huston. And that's a perfect place to parlay into the visuals, because this movie, despite being made in the early 1940s, still looks incredible. The scene in which Gutman explains the history of the Maltese Falcon to Spade is all done in one seven-minute take, and it is just incredible. Just as incredible as the story behind it, Basically, to make a long story short, the cinematographer, Arthur Edison, uh, rehearsed this scene with the actors for about two weeks, and if they messed up a line or broke something or if any weird thing happened in the middle of this take, they had to start at the very beginning. And as someone who has been a part of many plays where it involved, like, very long, like, one-scene, like dance numbers or acting numbers, if you messed up one part and starting all over again, it just makes you want to, like, rip your face off and then rip it up and make little, like, face confetti. It it's frustrating. But the scene is fantastic, so it was well worth it. And on a side note, Arthur Edison would go on to do the cinematography for Casablanca and the 1931 version of Frankenstein, so great stuff from him. At the end of the day, The Maltese Falcon is, in my opinion, the greatest noir film that's that will ever be made. It's got interesting characters, beautiful cinematography, a great score, and all of the acting across the board is stellar. But that is all for me, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Next time on the AFI Project, we're going to be returning to the Francis Ford Coppola well to talk about a movie of his that's a lot more sane. We're going to be talking about the only sequel that is on the AFI's Top 100 Movies of All Time list, The Godfather Part 2. But if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down in the comments down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.